Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. We are going to continue with the next part of our story about the white rocking horse. The rocking horse has been taken from the toy store and is now being given as a gift to the young boy named Dave. When the rocking horse arrives, he spends some time in the attic and makes friends with a jumping jack. It is finally time for Dave to get his present, so the rocking horse is taken downstairs, and there he meets an old friend, the sawdust doll. The White Rocking Horse, Part 4 The white rocking horse wanted to gallop across the room and back because he felt so happy at seeing the sawdust doll again. As for the sawdust doll, she wanted to stand up and clap her hands as the calico clown used to clap his cymbals together. But neither of the toys dared do anything because in the same room with them, were the father and mother of Dave and Dorothy. And the toys, as I told you, never moved or spoke when anyone was near them. The old jumping jack looks good, said the lady, as she smoothed out the dress of the sawdust doll. Yes, I'm glad we brought him down out of the attic, poor fellow, replied the man as he rocked the horse slowly to and fro to make sure he was in a good place. I wonder if these toys ever know or care what joy they give to the children, he asked. Oh, I think they do, said Dorothy's mother. Do you know, she went on with a little laugh, sometimes I think the toys are really alive and can talk among themselves and do things. What nonsense, laughed the man. Do you think this rocking horse can come to life? And he petted our toy friend. Well, maybe not exactly come to life, answered his wife. But I am sure they must have good times when we aren't looking. See that sawdust doll? Why, I really think she is looking at the rocking horse as if she knew him. And you know they did come from the same store. Well, I think everything is ready now, said the man. Let us go out and leave the toys to themselves. Perhaps they will have a really good time, as you think. I am sure they will, the lady said, laughing softly. Then the door was shut, and of course you can guess what happened when no human eyes were there to watch the rocking horse and the sawdust doll. The doll was the first to speak. Oh, how glad I am to see you, she said, as she stood up on her sawdust stuffed legs and looked at the horse high above her head. You can't imagine how glad I am. And I am glad to see you, neighed the horse. I never dreamed I would be brought to the house where you were. Tell me, are you going to be a present too? No, I was bought for Dorothy's birthday, was the answer. Don't you remember? I left the store some weeks ago. You are going to be Dave's present. Yes, I am, and I hope I will be a good one, said the white rocking horse. You certainly will be, and now, please, tell me about my friends at the store, she begged. How are the bold tin soldier and the calico clown? Each send you his love, said the white horse, and the candy rabbit, the lamb on wheels, and the monkey on a stick. Each and every one wanted to be remembered to you. That was very kind of them, I'm sure, said the sawdust doll, but tell me, have you had any fun since I've left? Oh, a little, was the answer. Only last night, the elephant who borrowed some roller skates started to race with me, said the rocking horse. We got as far as the elevators, but one of his skates came off. We started back, and then the watchman came in and spoiled the fun. 
What a shame, cried the sawdust doll. I wish I had been there to see, but I am so glad you have come to live here. Is it a nice place? asked the horse. Oh, the very nicest, exclaimed the sawdust doll. Dorothy is such a kind girl to me, and you will find her brother Dave a good boy too. I suppose you are going to belong to him. Well, I haven't really heard much about it, said the horse. A number of boys came into the store and tried to ride me. One gave me some kicks in my side, so hard that I was afraid all my paint would come off. But a girl in the store oiled me and I am all right again. I think I remember Dave. Yes, he was in the store once when Dorothy's mother brought her little girl in to look at dolls, and I was the one the mother picked out, because I had such nice eyes. Nice brown eyes, I think she said, cried the rocking horse. Well, of course it would not do for me to say that, said the sawdust doll, smiling. At any rate, here we two are, together and in a happy home, and I am glad of it. So am I, the rocking horse said. And I am too, came from the jumping jack. If it had not been for you, my rocking friend, he went on, I might still be dust covered and in the attic. So the toys talked among themselves and even moved about a little, but not too much. Or they could not tell at what moment someone might come in. Well, you will soon have Dave riding on your back, said the sawdust doll to the rocking horse, as together they waited. I can see the morning light coming over the hills, and I heard Dorothy and Dave saying yesterday that they were going to get up even before the sun to see what Dave had gotten. He certainly got a fine lot of presents, remarked the jumping jack, in a sort of rusty squeaking voice. I hope, hush, here they come now, whispered the sawdust doll. The door opened. In rushed two happy, laughing, shouting children. Here is my white rocking horse, shouted Dave. Oh, it's just the very one I hoped I'd get. With a leap, he was up on the red saddle and grasping the red reins in his hands. Giddy up, cried the boy, and he kicked his feet on the sides of the horse. But as Dave had on soft slippers, he did not hurt the white rocking horse in the least, nor did he chip off any paint. Here I go, here I go, shouted Dave. Oh, what a fine horse. He's lovely, Dave, said his sister. The white rocking horse felt very happy. And so did the sawdust doll, and even the jumping jack was as jolly as the rest. You may have a ride on my horse if you want to, Dorothy, said Dave, as he slowly brought his steed to a stop. Thank you, answered his sister. And so the day came and brought happiness with it to Dave, and also to the white rocking horse and the sawdust doll. For the toys were in a fine house and had kind children to look after them. And that means more than you think to toys. As the day went on, many visitors came to the house. Among these were Mirabelle and Arnold, the boy and girl who lived next door. Oh, what nice things you got, said Mirabelle. I wanted a lamb on wheels for my birthday, such as I once saw in the store, but I have so many things I don't exactly need that now. Maybe I'll get one later on. And I wanted a bold tin soldier, said Arnold, her brother, but I have a paint set and a drum, and I'll wait until my next birthday for the soldier. The fun of the evening was as jolly as that during the day, but at last Mother said, Come now, children, it is time to go to sleep. You may play with your white rocking horse tomorrow, Dave, and you may have a play party for your sawdust doll, Dorothy. And 
very happy indeed, brother and sister went to bed. It became very still and quiet and dark in the house. It was like the hour in the department store when there is no one to see the toys. Now I can move about, said the white rocking horse, who had been taken up to Dave's room. I wish I could see the sawdust doll and have a talk with her. She is in Dorothy's room, said an old driver, who had once sat on a tin express wagon. Dorothy always takes her doll to bed with her. Then I think I'll go in and see my friend, said the horse. I can gallop softly down the hall and into Dorothy's room. As long as no one sees me, I am allowed to move about. Yes, go ahead, said the driver. I'd go with you if I still had my wagon. Go and see the sawdust doll. So, rocking softly over the thick carpet and making no noise, the white horse made his way out of Dave's room down the hall, and straight to where Dorothy was sleeping with the sawdust doll on the pillow beside her. The white rocking horse stopped in the hall outside of Dorothy's room. The door was open, and in the dim glow of a nightlight, the horse could see the sawdust doll on the bed. Hi there. Psst. Come on out here and have a talk, called the rocking horse. What's that? Who is calling me? asked the sawdust doll, for she had fallen asleep, being rather tired from having had so much fun that day. I am calling you, answered the white rocking horse. Come on out into the hall. I don't want to come in for fear someone might come along, and it would never do to let it be known that we toys can move and talk when no one sees us. Indeed, no, never exclaimed the sawdust doll. Wait a minute and I'll come out to you. As you said, it would not do to be caught. I'll slip down and come out. The white rocking horse waited in the hall. Soon he heard a little thud on the carpet. That was the sawdust doll sliding down out of Dorothy's bed to the floor. A moment later, she stood beside the rocking horse in the hall. I hope you won't catch a cold, said the horse softly. It is breezy in this hall. Oh, no, I have a nice little warm shawl Dorothy made for me, answered the sawdust doll. Thank you for thinking of me, though. Well, you see, I want to be able to take a good report of you back to your friends in the toy store, neighed the horse. Do you think you will ever get back there again? The doll asked as she snuggled up in a corner, wrapping the shawl around her. I don't know, the horse replied. Of course, I could rock back to the store if no one saw me, but it is a long way, and if I went through the streets, I'd almost certainly be seen. I think so too, said the doll. I'm afraid we shall just have to stay here together the rest of our lives. Well, I like it in this house since you are here, said the horse. And who knows, perhaps some of the other toys may join us here on some future birthday. Wouldn't that be fine, exclaimed the doll, clapping her hands. I'd dearly love to see the bold tin soldier again, and the calico clown, the lamb on wheels, the candy rabbit, and the monkey on a stick. I'd like to finish the race with the elephant on his roller skates, said the horse, laughing softly. But I don't suppose I ever will. He did look so funny when one skate came off. I wish I had been there to see, said the sawdust doll. Now tell me everything that happened in the store after I left. So the horse told of different happenings, how sometimes rough boys ran in and jumped on his back, and how one unpleasant boy poked the calico clown so hard that the symbols were nearly broken, and how the candy rabbit had a bit of sugar chipped off one ear. Dear me, how exciting, cried the sawdust doll. And now tell me about yourself, urged the white rocking horse. 
Have you had any adventures? Oh, I should say I had. Yes, indeed, was the answer. Did I tell you about the time Dave ran over me with the rocking chair, pretending it was a horse like you? My sawdust ran out of a hole in my side and I fainted. No, really? Did you? Indeed I did. It was the strangest feeling. But I should think if all your sawdust ran out, and really how terrible that must have been, you wouldn't be here anymore, said the horse. Oh, it didn't all run out, the doll answered. Dorothy's father hurried to the carpenter shop and got more sawdust, and Dorothy's mother sewed it up in me so I was all right again. I'm glad of that, remarked the white rocking horse. So am I, said the doll. But do you know since then, I have not been quite the same. In what way, asked the white rocking horse. Well, I seem to have a little indigestion, went on the sawdust doll. I think the carpenter shop sawdust they stuffed into me was not the same kind that was put in me when I was made in the shop. Very likely not, agreed the horse. All sawdust is not alike, but still, you are looking rather well. I am glad you think so, remarked the doll. But now, let us talk of something more pleasant. Tell me again about the race you had with the elephant on his roller skates. So the white horse did. But as you know as much of that funny race as I do, there is no need of putting it in here again. So the two friends talked together in the hall until, all of a sudden, the doll exclaimed, Oh, it is getting daylight. We must go back to our places. You to Dave's room and I to Dorothy's. Quick! The white rocking horse galloped back down the hall, and the doll made her way into the room of the little girl, whose birthday present she was. Now... Whether the carpenter shop sawdust was not the right kind to allow the doll to move quickly enough, and whether the oil the clerk had rubbed on the side of the horse made him a bit slow and slippery, I cannot say. Anyhow, daylight suddenly broke just as the doll reached the side of Dorothy's bed and before she had time to climb up into it by taking hold of the blankets. As for the horse, he was only halfway inside Dave's room when the sun came up and awakened both children. And of course, their eyes being open, Dorothy looked at her doll and Dave at his horse. Neither toy dared move. Oh, oh, cried Dave when he saw that his white rocking horse was on the other side of the room from where he had left it when he went to sleep the night before. Oh, oh, someone played with my horse. What makes you think so? Asked his father, coming in to see what Dave was shouting about. Because he's moved, the little boy answered. My rocking horse has moved. I guess the wind blew him, said Daddy. The wind from your open window blew on the horse, made him rock to and fro, and he moved that way. But Dave shook his head. Either my horse moved by himself in the night when I was asleep, he said, or else somebody was riding him. And when Dorothy woke up and saw her doll lying on the carpet, just under the edge of the bed, the little girl cried out as Dave had done. Oh, oh, oh! What's the matter? asked Mother, hurrying in. Somebody took my doll out of bed, or else she got out herself in the night, said Dorothy. She probably fell out, said Mother with a laugh. The doll couldn't get out herself, and no one has been in your room. But we know what happened, don't we? And that's the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight.